Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name's Rob Evans, and I'm your weight loss coach, your health strategist and internationally published author, helping take your, your mindset, your life, your business, your body from where you are right now to being unstoppable. And today, I'm going to preface this recording by saying that you might be getting some background noise as we go through this recording because I'm recording this in early evening here in Melbourne, Australia, and we're undergoing quite a horrific storm right now. Uh, there's lots of lightning, lots of thunder. I could lose the lights and power to the house. Um, and so it's quite loud. I have a tin roof too. So um, it's quite therapeutic at night time, I find. I like a good storm, but if that's what you're hearing in the background, that is why. Now today, what I'm going to talk to you about are power foods and a way for creating success for yourself by creating unstoppable energy by the virtue of the, the foods that you're eating and the way that you're eating. And I'm going to tell you my formula for success, which is a 95% rule. So uh, a few podcasts ago, I talked about uh, the six meals a day and uh, I walked you through what the typical foods were that we were eating. But I want to step back a little and I want to talk about the way that we eat generally. Now, unfortunately, this is, so this is one of my dreams that every school curriculum throughout the world has nutrition as a fundamental compulsory subject that people are taught just like English, maths, etc. I also think it should be about business and money that they should be teaching those things too. But uh, particularly nutrition, because the kids are doing what the parents did. And what are the parents doing? Well, the parents are doing kind of what their parents taught them, but in some ways they're doing a, a poorer job than their parents because perhaps in their parents' days, like in, in my mum and dad's days, only mum, uh, or sorry, only dad worked. Mum stayed at home. Mum later took on some work later in life, but it was, um, she was a civil celebrant and um, that was very adaptable hours for her. But uh, pretty much they lived in an era where one person worked and the other one stayed at home and looked after the kids and trained the kids and did all that kind of stuff. And that also meant that they cooked the meals. And at the, during those times, like my parents had a big vegetable garden as well. So we were cooking a lot of the, the food that came out of our own garden. And, well, let's face it, the way that uh, meat products were produced in the older days are different to they are now. They're fed, like animals are fed uh, more uh, hormones and that kind of stuff, even though they're not supposed to be, but uh, they're fed a lot of grain-fed stuff. Gene they're fed on gen genetically modified food. And so the food just tastes different, like a carrot now doesn't taste the same as a carrot 30 years ago. Uh, so it's just different. And so most people just don't have the knowledge as to how to construct meals. And of course, the food manufacturers, and there's like five major food manufacturers that produce most of the, the processed food around the globe, uh, they produce things that um, are either high in fat, high in additives, high in sugar, and uh, they might have really colourful packaging that appeal to the children. And the children see them in the supermarket, so when the parents are out shopping, they buy it for the kids because it's easy for them when it comes to breakfast, uh, when it comes to um, packing their lunch boxes and everything. And they just think, okay, well, it's a packet of that, packet of that, packet of that, bang, easy done. And look, here's a white roll with something in it. And bang, the kids are taken care of. Very little... Uh, like wholesome food in there, very little nutrition value, and normally high, high sugar, high fat. So of course, what are we doing? We're breeding a generation that is going to have a shorter life than ours because we're killing them with food. And that comes from a couple of things, like I say. One is lack of knowledge, one is laziness, uh, time pressure, all that kind of stuff. So... When it comes to feeding yourself, you are also under pressure. So business people, entrepreneurs, very, very busy. And a lot of people will just live on what they can buy at the shop that's already done. So like if it's um, 
say breakfast, maybe you're buying breakfast, maybe you're buying lunch, maybe you're skipping morning tea and you're surviving on an energy drink or a cup of coffee or something like that. Um, and when it comes to dinner, maybe you're buying dinner, maybe you're getting some takeaway on the way home, maybe you're skipping dinner, uh, maybe you're grabbing a salad or something like that because, you know, that's what you feel like. Who knows? I mean, you know what it is that you are doing, but unfortunately, most entrepreneurs do not look after themselves very, very well at all. I mean, I'm not going to talk about the exercise here. That's another, another story. But if we're just talking about food, my job is to help give you some knowledge about what it is that you need to be eating to make sure that you are making yourself healthier, giving yourself nutrition, nutritious food, nourishing your body with the right nutrients so that you can get the results that you really want to get to. So, and like one of those is health, but one of those is also your business, uh, your business uh, objectives too, because if you are healthier, you're going to be more energized. If you're more energized, you're going to be more focused. If you're more focused, you're going to get more sales. You're gonna run a better business. I mean, it's all linked in together. It's just that most people don't really connect it that way. So let's talk about some of the key power foods here. So I'm gonna talk about some key categories. Most people do not eat enough protein, okay? Most people don't eat enough protein at breakfast, they don't eat enough at lunchtime. Their evening meal is probably the meal that's the closest in the day of people getting enough protein in. The next thing is in plant-based food. Now I'm not talking about becoming a vegan here. I'm not vegan, but what I'm talking about is eating plenty of plant-based food. So in Australia, the recommendation is to eat between five to seven serves of um, uh, vegetables a day and two serves of fruit. Now we wanna make sure that the vegetables that do the fruit just because of the fructose and, and so forth. So we wanna keep that balance right. So more, more vegetables. So when I'm talking about plant-based food here, I like to divide that into two categories with low energy carbohydrates, if you like, and high energy carbohydrates. So your high energy carbohydrates or complex carbohydrates, you might know them as, uh, in your plant-based food, in the fruits, I'm gonna keep it really simple. It's really only your banana is your high energy one. When it comes to your vegetables, it's really only your potatoes that fall into that category. So white potatoes, your sweet potato, we call them here in Australia, the yellow, orange, sorry, uh, potato. Um, they're your high energy ones. Everything else is pretty much low energy. So what I recommend is you want to go with colorful, crunchy food. Don't overcook it. Uh, things like broccoli, cauliflower, carrot, um, you know, capsicum. Uh, pumpkin is great as well. Um, I eat uh, lots of beans. I eat um, like bro broccoli, cauliflower, carrot, uh, baby corn, red capsicum. Uh, your Spanish onion, uh, you know, they're kind of the staples that I eat on a, a regular basis. But you know, your Asian greens, all those types of things like bok choy and um, uh, you know, oh, parsnips. Um, you know, there's a whole range of different things that you can be eating that are really, really good for you. Um, so getting plenty of that in. Now to put this into context for you in terms of how I live, so right now I'm probably having about 23 cups of plant-based food a day and one of those cups is, is fruit. Uh, the rest of it is vegetables. I eat a lot of vegetables. Um, the next part is those high energy foods. Now, most people overdo the high energy food. Now I mentioned the high energy plant-based food. Oh, sorry, I should mention the fruits to be eating. So basically anything that's not a banana is low energy. So a great one that I love are mixed berries. I love the frozen mixed berries too because I put them in smoothies. It makes it more, more satisfying. Um, when it comes to your, uh, your high energy food, so here we're talking about complex carbs, okay? So things like um, uh, your grains, rice, uh, quinoa, rolled oats, pasta, bread, um, those types of, and your potatoes that I mentioned before, they're all your high energy complex carbohydrates. Now, when people say, oh, I'm, I'm cutting out carbs, what they're normally referring to is cutting out those high energy ones. Now, with every plan that I give somebody, we never cut them out. 
But what we do do is make sure you're getting measured portions of them. The trouble is most people overdo it. So a pasta dish is a great example. So whereas you probably should be having like a cup of pasta, which is about a, a serve for somebody. Some people are having like six cups, seven cups of pasta and overdoing it. And that becomes a typical way of eating. And uh, people feel like, oh, well, I'm hungry, so I'll eat a piece of toast or a couple of pieces of toast or I'll have a bread roll or um, I'll have an extra cup of rice or an extra cup of pasta or more potato or whatever it is. I think, oh, well, I can't get full if I don't eat those things. The problem is most people don't combine their meals the right way. So when you get, say, I'll keep it real simple for you. If you cut your fingers off your hand and use the palm of your hand, that's about the size of the protein that you want on your plate, whether it's chicken, fish, vegetarian sauce, about that. When it comes to the amount of high energy food that you want, it's about, oh, we say about a fistful. So I, I say for people um, that I'm working with, it's about half a cup maybe of brown rice, something like that, half a cup to a cup, uh, depending on uh, you know, your demographic and um, you know, your size and your goal, but I'm just generalizing here. And the rest of the plate should be plant-based food. So basically at least two thirds probably of your plate should be plant-based food, veggies, colorful ones. Uh, now when you combine all of those things together, that makes the meal way more satisfying, way more filling. When it comes to the plant-based food, because people don't eat anywhere enough of this, it's very fibrous. And when you combine that with drinking plenty of water throughout the day, because it's fiber, what happens with fiber? Fiber absorbs two to three times its weight in water. Okay, so what that means is that you stay fuller for longer, which then means you're less likely to go and snack on things that are highly processed, high sugar, high fat. And this is the problem that we have globally. People are filling themselves up with the right type of food, feeling hungry, and then because of that lack of knowledge, feeling like, oh, well, I have to eat high energy foods, so I've got to eat, they don't think about it that way, but they're thinking about, I need to eat carbs, so I need to eat bread, pasta, rice, whatever. So I tend to overindulge in the meal at the later part of the day, and then getting up to that time, I think, well, they haven't eaten a proper breakfast, they haven't eaten a proper morning tea, maybe they haven't eaten a proper lunch, so snacking on things like chocolate bars or uh, cookies, cakes, muffins, those things that are really highly processed. Uh, put that in, into context, like a typical muffin that you might buy at, say, a coffee shop, they'll have about 400 to maybe 600 calories in them, okay, just in that muffin. And if you don't believe me, then go and pick one up next time and you know, find the calorie information if they come you know, individually wrapped and stuff. Uh, four to 600 calories or more, depends on what's on it. I picked up one in uh, 7-Eleven when I was up in uh, Brisbane uh, a few months ago before we got locked down. Oh, well, I guess it was longer than that, maybe it was six months ago. And I think it had 767 calories in it because it was a muffin and it had icing on it as well. I was like, holy crap, that is ridiculous. Uh, because most of the weight loss programs that I do for my female clients are around 1,200 calories. Now, this one muffin was 767 calories. Now, you would eat it and you would think, wow, that tasted okay, but you'd still be hungry and it would massively spike your blood, um, blood sugar levels. Um, so they're the types of things that people get wrong. So when you combine those meals the right way, that's what works for you. Now I'm gonna tell you about my 95% rule in a moment, but I wanna talk about the foods that you need to avoid, okay? These, these foods, when you eat them, and if they're part of your staple of what you're currently eating, I mean, they say that we eat about the same 20 foods for our whole life. Now the trouble is that you'll you'll say, I'm having a treat, and say it was that muffin. But before you know it, you make those muffins a regular morning tea thing with your coffee, or in the afternoon, or half a muffin, or a cookie, or a couple of cookies, or whatever it is, what's in the morning tea room, and maybe you go for those, or what's at home. Most people are working from home at the moment, 
and depending on what comes into the house, it might be you know Tim Tams, which are an Australian biscuit, which are very very popular, covered in chocolate wafer biscuits with a layer of chocolate in between. Um, that they, they are quite nice, uh, but I don't get them into the house to start with. Uh, but you know, things like that, or it might be chips, it might be lollies, it might be the cookies. It could be wow, big flash of lightning just then. Um, all of those things are going to detract from you having the optimal energy that you really want. So what we need to also avoid, alcohol, right? Alcohol, look, the red wine, there are some health benefits in that there's some antioxidants and so forth. I personally, I've never drunk uh, alcohol um, for a variety of reasons, but I, I don't drink it. I say if you can eliminate it from your life, then fantastic. Your body will thank you for it in the long run. It does, the alcohol does kill brain cells. So, uh, you know, I want to use as much of my brain power as I can. Otherwise, you do it in moderation. Okay, moderation. And what does that mean? Maybe it's on a special occasion. Don't binge drink. Um, I, I wouldn't do it every night. Uh, but... Uh, my suggestion to a lot of people is that have, you know, drink a lot of alcohol, cut down with the aim of cutting out eventually. Uh, processed foods. So here I'm talking about a couple of different things. Your, so your takeaway meals, um, your uh, frozen dinners um, are probably a better option, but um, all, all your takeaway food uh, that you get is highly processed very, very nutrient poor. So here I'm talking about things like, okay, so it might be pizza, it might be uh, you know, like a fast food hamburger or chicken of some sort. Uh, I won't name the brands, but you know, you've got the idea of what I'm talking about, fried chicken and, and that kind of stuff. Very, very low in nutrient value. Um, well, I'm, if it's a good chicken breast, then it's good, but it's what it's surrounded with, which is highly... Um, you know, got a lot of additives in it, a lot of fat, and really not great for you. You'd be way, way better off doing it uh, yourself. Um, so you've got to be wary of those things. And if you, if you take any of those meals that I just said, they're very low in protein, they're very low in plant-based food, and uh, some of them are very high in uh, your high-energy carbs, your complex carbohydrates, and, but they're certainly high in additives, they're high in sugars, they're high in salts, sodiums, and they're high in fat as well. So they just do not serve you well at all. So you wanna keep away from them because they don't help you feel good. They will make, it, make you feel bloated. So I've got a really great example right here. So I'm working with a client right now, a male client, and this, without a shadow of a doubt, or a shadow of a lie, I should say, is exactly what he told me that he eats. So I walk through and say, so what do you have for breakfast? And he said, oh, I don't really eat breakfast. Well, well actually, he said, I have uh, you know, uh, maybe a Red Bull, something like that, and coffee. What do you have for morning tea? Oh, I normally have like a, like a cheese roll. Now in Australia, we have, you know, like imagine a white roll with cheese on top and maybe bacon or something and uh, like it's melted, like they just sell it in the supermarkets as like a six pack. He says, I might have a couple of those, one or two of those plus two donuts. I'm like, okay, what do you have for lunch? The same thing. Okay, what do you have when you go home? Oh, I might have some toast, a couple of bits of toast. And then what do you have for dinner? Well, it's like a chicken parma and chips, something like that. And then uh, every night it's two cans of Jim Beam and Coke and ice cream and chocolate afterwards. Now, if you break down all that food, there's no plant-based food really to speak of. It's highly processed, high, um, yeah, high sodium, high energy food, and just very, very low nutritious value. Now, I've been working with him for two weeks. We weighed him in on Friday. He has lost 4.6 kilos. He says he feels fantastic. He says, I can't believe how much my skin has cleared up as well. And he's starting to feel more focused, more energized. And he said, just feeling really good. He says, my, my pants are fitting differently already. Um, and he's feeling really great. 
And I, I said to him, if you, and he hasn't done it 100%, the six meals that I've suggested and sticking to the meal plan I've created for him. He hasn't done it 100%, but what he has done, he hasn't done any energy drinks, he hasn't done any junk food, no donuts, uh, and he, the meals that he has been getting in, he's been getting about four to five, I think, they've been off the meal plan and nutritious. So that's how quickly you get the difference. So really, really powerful. So, you know, the other thing about removing the, those snack foods that are not going to serve you. So the chocolate bars, the lollies, the, or candies, um, the, uh, you know, the sodas, the sugary drinks, the fruit juices that are high in calories, um, you know, all of that stuff that may come in a shiny packet and is near the cash register when you're leaving the store and stuff, they do not serve you well. You can do much, much better by snacking on something nutritious. So I say to people, first of all, when you're hungry, make sure that you're in, uh, go back and check. Have you eaten enough plant-based food today? Have you skipped a meal? Have you been drinking enough water? So this guy, again, he works outdoors too as a landscape uh, landscape designer and so he's very physical job and hardly drinks any water he's surviving off energy drinks and now he's changing that so you want to be drinking at least two liters of water a day i aim for about three to four uh, myself um, and that helps as i said before keeps you fuller for longer and it also helps mobilize fat and flush everything out the other thing is to make sure that you don't overeat on the high energy carbohydrates like your breads, pastas, rice and everything. Really watch your serving of those. Now after 30 years, I still measure everything for me. I weigh on the scales my protein. I measure my vegetables by a cupful and I measure my high energy like rice is the main one that I eat, brown rice. I measure that by the cupful. For me, I just have half a cup. Uh, so really important because most people think oh, I need to eat more of that because I'm really hungry. But instead, if they ate more protein and more plant-based food with reduced amount of high energy carbs, you would feel so much better. You'd feel um, fuller and you would not feel as bloated because um, that's what uh, the client I was talking about before, he was feeling all the time really bloated. Well, no wonder he's putting all this junk into his body and he's just like blowing up because he's just eating um, like basically flour and additives and stuff. Uh, so no wonder he was feeling like rubbish. So let me uh, tell you a bit about my 95% rule. So I'm not looking for 100% compliance when I'm coaching somebody with um, meal plans and change. I'm looking for 95% compliance. So think about it this way and you can do the sums yourself if you like. There's six meals a day. Okay, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and three snacks. There's seven days a week. Okay, six times seven is 42. Now, what I'd say is that you can have three meals off a week and pretty much eat whatever you like, and you'll still be 95% compliant. Now, if you can be 95% compliant in life, then I think you're doing a pretty good job. So you're gonna get great results and sustainable results if you implement that in your eating. So what does that mean in practical terms? So three meals out of those 42. Now, if you skip one of those meals, so let's say that you've only eaten 40 meals, then that's already counting as two. So that means you can only have one. So this incentivizes you to make sure you're getting your six meals in. And then you can have three and have your pizza or your pasta or whatever on those other particular days and you'll still be 95% compliant. And here's another tip that I'll give you. Spread it throughout the week. So I wouldn't do well on Monday because Monday is the most motivated people will be in the week. I tend to do it on a, a Wednesday because it's the middle of the week. It's a little bit of a reward. And so I'm not doing this right now, but in the past I would say, okay, well, it's Wednesday Let's make Wednesday dinner, I passed a night with the kids. And I might have more pasta than I normally would, uh, but I would enjoy it, and then I'd get back on next meal, okay? And I'd have whatever I'd want on the pasta. And if I wanted some garlic bread, I'd have some garlic bread, but that's one of my meals. And then I might do one on the weekend. Maybe I might have 
uh, you know, something different on the weekend. And then maybe I might have a dessert or something that was also on the weekend, a Saturday or a Sunday, uh, that I wouldn't normally have. And there's my three. Uh, so if you integrate it throughout the week, then that works really well. So for instance, what I do for a lot of my clients, we've got some really great recipes. So we'll do like pasta on uh, a Wednesday. We'll do say a Friday or a Saturday, we might do homemade pizza, really simple. And then uh, I might throw in a, uh, another treat for them, like a, a special dessert or something that's healthier, but still it feels like a big treat on uh, another day on the weekend as well. And then the idea is that you give people a plan that they can stick to forever, the principles. Because unfortunately what happens is, I saw my, the client I was talking about, so he's using things like cheese rolls and donuts twice a day, every day, and that's just what he's doing every day. And then on the weekend, you know, like it, well, not just on the weekend, every night he's having ice cream. Like, so all of these treats or cheat meals, if you like, are becoming every day, every meal type experiences. Not, not at all a great way to give you a, a sustained level of energy, a sustained level of health that you need to be able to be achieving the goals that you want. So final tip is make sure that you never miss breakfast. I get up at about 20 past four each morning and I wanna be making sure that I'm eating my meals as close to 5 a.m. as possible because I wanna be eating every two to three hours and some days I'll eat eight meals. Um, so I wanna get most of my eating done by 6 p.m. because that's just what my goal is at the moment. Um, I have clients eating later than that, but I'm trying to get mine in by six. So that means that I've gotta start eating pretty early in the day to make that happen to get the spacing right. So I hope you found this really useful because this might sound like not really like a sexy topic to you, but trust me, this is so, so powerful. If more people ate this way, you would be surprised at how much better you feel. You'll feel less bloated. And we all know what that bloated feeling is like, like at Christmas time. So when you've overeaten and you go to bed and it's like, oh, oh your partner reaches out to touch you or whatever, you say, oh, don't touch me, don't touch me, my stomach feels so swollen or I just don't feel good. Um, that is not a way to live, okay? A lot of people feel like that all the time. You get these things right and you'll feel great all the time. You'll have more energy, more focus, and you watch just what you can do. So have a great day wherever you are in the world. Take care. I had a COVID test today just to uh, make sure. I've got some hay fever type symptoms. And I thought, well, let's just down the road. There weren't really any people in the queue. So I went and had that done. Really interesting experience. I'm not sure what they're doing over the other side of the world there, but they stick this long kind of uh, cotton bud down your throat and you're almost gagged and they shove the same one up your nostril. Um, but it's not just up your nostril, it goes right up. Jeez, it makes your eyes water. Um, but um, I feel fine. I just thought, well, look, there's no one in the queue. I might as well have a test. We are being made to wear masks compulsorily when we go out now in my state because uh, things are getting worse. And so that's even if you're driving in the car, they want you to wear a mask. It's a $200 fine if you don't do it and the police are really gonna start cracking down. Uh, that start, takes place, I think, from midnight tomorrow night. So um, yeah. It's all happening here. So stay safe wherever you are in the world. And uh, if you want me to help you create the ultimate plan to help give you more energy for your meals, then all you need to do is go to the mentaltoughnessandbodyshow.com, scroll to the very bottom, click on the opt in for a consultation button, and you can be working personally with me. I'll give you a 30 minute consultation for free so that we can connect and talk about what's perhaps the best strategy for you. So take care of yourself. I'll see you tomorrow.